So Tom, give us some background then to Aerojet Rocketdyne. Well, we are a, I would say we are the propulsion provider. You know, we have launched every human off of U.S. soil. Uh, we basically, our propulsion has visited every planet in the solar system. Um, so if, if something goes into space, we probably have a role in it. So that's a great history for a business. It's a fantastic legacy. How do you move that forward? Uh, well, we take that legacy and the technology and the skills that we have, and, and we're really looking at, at it as, as a transportation architecture. We consider ourselves a transportation company. So it's not about propulsion. It's, it's what you're going to do with the propulsion and the rockets and, and the in-space. And ultimately, it's about getting stuff to where it needs to be in space so that it can it, it do its job and create value. So you have, a, you have a vision for the future then, and how you're going to change things? We, we, we have a vision, but it is very much a very dynamic environment right now within the space industry. So there's a whole lot of opportunity and there's a whole lot of uncertainty. So we, like every other company right now, are kind of charting where we want to go. And like I said, we're trying to look at not just propulsion, but where does transportation in space need to go? It's not just about a rocket. It's not about an in-space transfer stage. It's not about propulsion on a satellite. It's the whole thing. How do you get ultimately data or people where they need to go and get it back down to Earth so you can create value? And that's we're, we're really looking at it holistically. So I'm having a lot of com more conversations. I'm on the, the launch side, the big rockets, but I'm having a lot more uh, interactions with my colleagues who do in-space technology because we're looking at how do we marry all of that so we can provide an ultimate transportation solution to the customers. Uh, you know, you're talking about charting the future with your customers. What sort of things are they asking of you as they also chart their future? Well, of, of course, the first thing is, is reduced costs, right? You know, space access is expensive and one of the barriers um, is reducing it, the cost to get into space. The cheaper it is, the more people can go there, the more things that can be accomplished. So that's a primary uh, focus. Uh, we're seeing that partly manifesting itself in terms of things are getting smaller. Particularly, you know, on the data side, if, if you're doing something that's that's sending data back, it can get it's starting to get smaller. Um, so we're tracking that very closely. Um, and then on the human side, it's it's kind of the opposite. You know, humans aren't shrinking, right? So as we talk more about sending people out, it's bigger. So it, there's kind of, from our perspective, there's maybe a little divergence. If you're if you're on the data side, Earth observation, communications, things are getting smaller. Um, not going out to, to geosynchronous orbit, LEO, constellations, things like that. If you're doing human exploration, bigger is better. More volume, more mass, more energy, that's important. So we're tracking both of those. Um, and we think it's a very exciting, exciting time. There's a lot of uncertainty, and I think in uncertainty, there's opportunity. Tom, thank you very much. Good words. Thank you.